How many times have you heard some bigot say, if you're going to be in this country, you need to learn the language. Stay tuned. I'm going to give you eight reasons why. You need to learn the language. Hello, my loves. Kelly here. And welcome to another slice of my world. So I'm sure that you guys have either seen somebody on video or maybe heard somebody in person say that if you're going to be in this country, you should learn the language. Well, I live in Merida, Mexico, for those of you that do not know, um, and I should learn language. And I'm going to give you guys eight reasons why um, you should learn a language. And I've been here a little more than two years, and I'm working on my third year, and I am conversational at best. In 2014, I don't do things like normal people, y'all. In 2014, I decided I wanted to learn how to speak Spanish. And instead of just, you know, signing up for Rosetta Stone or taking a class, I flew down to Chile. I found out they didn't speak that much um, English down there, and I thought that would be a great place to start. But that was in 2014. Since that time, I was back in the States between 2014 and 2016. So that was two years I wasn't utilizing those language skills. And then from 2016 to 2018, I was in Thailand. And you definitely wasn't using those skills there. And then I came here and now with my body being what it is, um, you know, sometimes I get brain fog because I've been able to communicate and get things done, learning the language and getting fluent at it has not been a priority. But recently um, I had some things happen that really changed my mind on that. You know, it's not enough to just get by. So I'm gonna give you guys the eight reasons that I feel like you should learn to speak. The language of the new country that you've adopted if you're going to be there and call it home. The first one is for medical emergencies. You know, when you are not feeling your best and you need to be able to explain to an ambulance a driver or a police officer uh, who is, you know, aiding you that you are hurting in certain ways or that you have certain um, allergies or that kind of thing, you need to be able to communicate that. Here in Merida, um, I'll share, I'll put the link or card above here. I took a spill in the streets. I literally fell face forward into traffic. And fortunately, I had someone with me, but also I wasn't hurt very bad. But if I were, I couldn't, I couldn't tell the, the uh, whoever came, the ambulance or the police or whoever showed up to help me, I could tell them nothing, not really. And when your brain is in crisis, the one thing that I have learned, even if you're conversational, all of that kind of goes out the window. But if you're practicing and you become fluent and you really know how to communicate it, it's not really any different than speaking your native language. So I feel like, you know, that is a very, very good reason to learn the language because if you're allergic to something and they give you that, they didn't know because you couldn't communicate that and they couldn't understand it because you both are literally speaking two different languages. The number two reason you should learn to speak the language is because it kind of keeps you from being taken advantage of out in the marketplace um, and things of that sort. Here we hear a lot of people talk about gringa pricing and that kind of thing, um, but when you know how to speak the language and understand what is being said, you have a better chance of negotiating things when you hear that, you know, because they think you don't speak the language, you know, here's some things that are not cool, then you're able to address that. I'll give you a, an example. All of my examples, guys, are real life examples. I've lived them all. Um, I had a lady that was working for me at one point and she found out that I was sewing purses. And I've always been one that I want to support the local community. And when I was sharing my purses, a lot of people in the U.S. were asking me, could they buy the bags? And it's kind of a whole ordeal to ship things, you know, back to the U.S. And so as I was trying to figure this out, my thought was, I can hire some of the ladies that sew better than me, give them the pattern, and then they can, um, you know, make these nice bags, and then I can find a way to get them to the U.S. So I asked this lady, you know, if she knew anyone. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, she didn't really speak that much English. So she gets on the phone, and when she's talking to uh, whoever it is she's speaking to, one of the first things that comes out as she's thinking that I don't understand her is, 
AIS Americana. And that right there let me know why do they need to know what my nationality is so that they can quote me a price. So I knew right then and there that I was getting ready to be taken advantage of and I just chose not to do business with her. So you need to understand when you're out and about and you are trying to do business or you know, you're trying to buy things in the marketplace, understand what the pricing is, understand what, the, you know, what, they're, what they're selling you and understand if you're getting a good price or are you getting an inflated price because you don't understand what they're saying. Okay, if you have not yet hit the subscribe button, please do that. Please also make sure you give this video a thumbs up. That's how you help, uh, how about to say lupus? That's how you help YouTube help me get more people like you on my, on my videos. So please do that to support what nonsense and shenanigans I'm sharing. Okay. So reason number three, it kind of goes hand in hand with reason number one, except it's not quite as urgent. So you need to be able to deal with problems. You know, if like recently here, we had a really big rain and I've been here again going on three years. I've had my power go out, but I've never had my power go out for more than one day. And I was on day two, like, are we gonna get power back? Like what's going on? It's bright and sunny and there's no more rain. And you know, why am I still sitting here and I can't do anything, you know, with my electric stuff? And I need my coffee in the morning, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, so the, I sent a message to Mario. You guys have heard me mention Mario. 4.7 million times. Mario was clutch, y'all. Let me tell you what. I'll put the link above to where I talk, where I share with you guys what Mario, um, what his business is and what he does. But anyway, so I had to send a message to Mario. Hey, can you call the power company? Hey, can you call this person or that person in order to be able to understand, you know, what is going on in my house? Whereas if I knew how to speak the language, I could have made that phone call myself and I'm not getting information secondhand and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting to ask every question that I might want to ask. So when problems come up, you probably want to know, um, you know, what someone is saying, what, get, get all of your questions answered. And also if there's a situation with the police, you know, you want to make sure that you understand what they're saying, they understand what you're saying so that, you know, if there is a problem, if you've, if you've had a robbery or, you know, something like that, you want to be able to communicate uh, again if there's a problem. Number four is safety. And when I say safety, I don't necessarily mean personal safety, but could be that too, because if you are out and about in the neighborhood and because they figure you don't speak the language, they could plan to rob you right in your face. Merida is the number two safest city in all of North America. I'm not worried about that here. I'm just saying for whatever country you're in, if there is that possibility or that probability, they could be planning it right in your face. So you having a knowledge of the language would really help keep you safe. But I could tell you from my personal experience, I mentioned that I had gone to Chile to learn how to speak Spanish. When I was in Chile, um, there was a 6.7 earthquake on the Richter scale. And most people don't speak English. And fortunately for me, the fellow that I stayed with when I did the Airbnb, kind of, you know, what he said to me was, we get a lot of earthquakes here in Chile. He says, if you're out in, in a coffee shop or something like that, and you feel a little rumbling, that's normal, he says, but then you start watching the Chilenos. He says, as long as they're sitting there working, you're good to go. As soon as they close up that computer, he says, you close up your computer and you run like hell. And he says, you get to the highest point that you can, even if it means that you gotta hit them in the back of the head with your computer to claim that spot. <laughs> I was like, is it that serious, Claudio? Like, really? So anyway, um, but here's the thing. If you are in a place where, you know, there's, I've been in places, y'all, monsoons, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcano eruptions, um, insane hurricanes, you know, the whole nine yards. You can't keep up with um, what's going on on the news 
if you can't speak the language. You're relying on someone else to tell you, hey, you should probably board up your house. Hey, you should probably get some sandbags. You know, or, or hey, you should probably evacuate. So if you understand the language, you can also, you know, make sure that you're tapped into the safety measures. Like right now with coronavirus, we've had various curfews, various rule, rule changes in the whole nine yards. And I live in a Spanish speaking country, so guess what? Most of that information is coming at me in Spanish. Fortunately, I have a lot of expat groups and a lot of friends who speak it, and then I still get that information. But you don't really want to, again, rely on second hand. For me, it's important that I know that information firsthand, so I'm speaking and coming from a point of knowledge. Number five, you realize that when you go into a store, or a restaurant, you're forcing people to figure you out. You're forcing them to live your life or their lives on your terms, so to speak, because they don't know what you're saying and now they really want to help you and now they're really trying to figure it out. And so if you want to be courteous to the people that you are living in their country, it only makes sense that you would learn the language because they don't speak yours. This is their country, and you should probably learn a language. <laughs> Number six is when you're hiring someone to come and do work in your home, you want to understand the full terms of what it is that they're agreeing to do and what you're agreeing to have them do and what the payment is in the whole nine yards. So if you guys watched, I did a tour of my home uh, I think a couple of weeks ago now, I'll put the link to that above as well. And you saw that I had mentioned that I laid the grass in the backyard. Well, when the gentleman came out here, he was not only supposed to lay the grass, but he was also supposed to build a little stairway to go up into my casita from the back patio porch. Well, once he came out and he laid the grass and he moved my rocks to where I needed them, he piled up the bricks for the stairs and then he was gone. And I, I was like, well, are you gonna put some cement down? Are you gonna make that permanent? Like, can you do like the work that I actually thought that thought that I had hired him to do? And it turns out that he did what I told him to do. And because I didn't, again, fully understand what I was, you know, what I was sharing and he didn't fully understand what I was trying to get him to do, I ended up a dissatisfied customer and, you know, and feeling some type of way when it was my own fault. So if you're hiring people to come into your home, especially if it's going to be uh, some sort of renovation or a contract type thing, you want to understand what that contract is saying again so you can ask the essential questions. Even if you're doing business where there's an attorney involved and, you know, and they're translating the contract, you still want to make sure that you have a full understanding of what you're reading, what you're signing, so that you can ask informed questions. Number seven, it helps you with telephone communication. There is nothing more challenging than getting a phone call where you can't see body language, you can't you know, use your translator because you're on your phone, uh, or you're out and your phone rings and you can't get context clues per se because it's all on the phone and whoever is on the phone um, is speaking the language at the pace that is natural for them. So for you, because you aren't a native speaker, it might be like, wait, what, what, wait, 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 what? You know, so uh, it really does help you. I'll tell you the few conversations that I have had on the telephone were usually because there was a problem with, you know, with one of my um, utilities or with a delivery of something, and they were calling me to inform me of what the problem is, what the delay was, to find out you know, exact directions or whatever that may have been. And I was like, what, wait, wait, what? Like, slow down. And the few times that I was able to actually have a good telephone conversation, I left those conversations like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did a thing, you know feeling pumped up and proud. So it's kind of cool to be able to communicate where you don't have facial expressions in play or body language or a translator, because you're, like I said, 
if you're like me, your translation stuff is on your phone, and if you're on your phone, you know, that's kind of difficult. Number eight, it helps you to integrate into the culture as well as the society that you have moved to. Because if you're like me, a lot of people have, have moved, and then when they get to another country, they look for the expats. Then why did you, like, leave? Not spending all of your time with people who came from the same culture and the same country as you is part of the experience. So for me, I do have some friends who are local, but they speak English. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I do my best when I'm out and I, you know, communicate as, you know, conversationally as I can, but because I'm not better at speaking the language, it's not necessarily kept anybody from being friendly towards me, but it's kept me a little more standoffish because if I'm meeting someone and I feel like they've got a good vibe and they don't speak English, I almost feel like it's a, oh, what do I do, what do I say kind of situation and I'm not making as many friends as I possibly could or, you know, really jumping into the, the things that I could be learning about the culture, um, you know, and, and things of that nature. So I think that, you know, it's just, I think, a nice thing to do when you move to another country to do your best to learn the language. And I hope that you all enjoyed my eight reasons why. I would love to hear some extra reasons. If you've got some, put them in the comments below. And if you're in another country, you know, tell me if you're an expat or, or, or as I call myself, if you're an immigrant, you know, uh, let me know what country you have migrated to and if you've learned the language, if you're learning the language and what you think about it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Please make sure that you like this video, that you hit the subscribe button. And again, if you want to uh, support me in my channel in other ways, well, not the channel, but I guess maybe still the channel, you can hit me up over at joyfullycolorful.com where I have wearable art, I have my adult coloring books, and I actually have, you know, cool stuff for us veterans as well as us lupus warriors. So I hope that you'll visit me there. Have an amazing day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.